SpaceX is ready with exciting updates from Starbase launch site as repairs and upgrades on the spaceship launch pad are now close to completion. The Starlink loader box, ready to load Starlinks into the payload bay, gears up for its potential debut on Ship 28 or Ship 29. But that's not all. Launch of Russia's long-awaited and delayed moon lander Luna 25, scheduled to blast off on August 11th. How many tests and spectacles we can expect before the grand finale of SpaceX's second flight of the world's most powerful rocket? Dive in this video to unravel the answers. SpaceX has been making significant progress at its Starbase facility in Texas. Repairs and upgrades on the spaceship launch pad are nearing completion, setting the stage for the second flight of the world's most powerful rocket. Booster 10, which was recently relocated to the Massey test site, is undergoing crucial testing including a cryo-proof test campaign. During this test, the vehicle will be filled with cryogenic liquid nitrogen to assess its integrity under extreme temperatures similar to those encountered during actual space missions. If all goes well, Booster 10 could soon support the third flight of the ambitious Starship program. Moreover, the ongoing work at Starbase goes beyond just immediate flights. SpaceX demonstrates its forward-thinking approach through the Star Factory expansion. Progress has been made in adding more roof structure to the building, signaling the potential assembly of numerous Starship vehicles within it. One of the exciting developments this week is the return of the Starlink loader box to the payload integration building. This box plays a vital role in loading Starlink satellites into Starship's payload bay. Although it was underutilized since its previous testing on Ship 24 last year, it is now making a comeback. The question arises as to which ship, Ship 28 or Ship 29, will have the honor of carrying Starlinks first. Ship 28 has recently received tiles over its weld lines, making it distinguishable from Ship 29, which still exhibits naked welds. A newcomer has emerged in the high bay, catching the attention of space enthusiasts. Named Ship 24.2, this vehicle is labeled as a ship payload base section and features a single ring with a flat elliptical dome, along with several standout pipes and reinforcements. SpaceX believes that this reinforced ring is intended for a stress test of the payload bay section. Once the test is completed, Ship 24.2 is likely to be transported to Massey for further work on the lower half of the nose cone structural stand to support payload bay section testing. Such testing is of utmost importance for SpaceX to assess the strength of the payload bay on board, a crucial step in preparing for starships to carry Starlink satellites and other payloads. Meanwhile, Preparations are underway at the Mega Bay for the upcoming static fire test campaign of Booster 9. The exact timing of the static fire remains uncertain, but it could take place before the end of the month, contingent upon deluge plate installation and testing. Moreover, a mysterious tank has been installed near one of Booster 9's smaller chimes, leaving observers wondering about its purpose. Although the details remain unknown, SpaceX's progress continues to captivate enthusiasts who eagerly await more updates on this intriguing development. As construction on the second megabay progresses, it has now reached its fourth level, with three of the four corners of level four already installed. A construction elevator is being set up, and the anticipation for the next milestones, particularly level five, grows among those following SpaceX's activities at Starbase. The prefabrication of the megabay sections at the Sanchez site is well underway, and as the final sections are being built, the Mega Bay nears completion. This facility, if similar in size to the old one, will only need one more level and the top floor to be fully operational. Crews have been working diligently to connect Booster 10 to the recently installed ground umbilicals, a crucial step in preparation for the rocket's second flight. These improvements and tests are essential for ensuring the success of future missions. Moreover, progress continues on the upcoming static fire test campaign for Booster 9. The precise timing for the static fire remains uncertain as it depends on the installation and testing of the deluge plate. This essential step paves the way for Booster 9's second integrated flight test of Starship, marking a significant milestone in SpaceX's efforts to refine the rocket's capabilities. Among these developments, work has been ongoing at the launch site, including modifications to the shielding protecting the drawworks. The drawworks are crucial for lowering the chopsticks which were raised earlier to accommodate the numerous cranes around the orbital launch mount area. These careful adjustments and preparations play a vital role in ensuring the smooth and efficient functioning of SpaceX's ambitious Starship program. The commitment and dedication of the SpaceX teams are evident in the continuous work on cryogenic pipes, the concrete pumps, relentless operation even at night, 
and the relocation of ground fabrication buildings, as SpaceX ventures to overcome challenges and improve its space launch capabilities, the progress at the Starship launch site indicates the company's unwavering pursuit of innovation and success in space exploration. Last week at Starbase, some significant events took place even when workers weren't around. During this time, testing of the orbital launch site upgrades occurred, making observers curious about what was happening. The first test appeared to be some kind of purge, as it stirred up dirt and made it fly away. The venting or purge process seemed ongoing for some time, creating an intriguing spectacle. The second round of testing was even more peculiar, with workers clearing the pad and security establishing a blast danger area. Seven tests of the Raptor Boost quick disconnects were conducted, leading to a loud series of tests unlike anything seen before. These tests signify progress towards Orbital Flight Test 2, also known as Electric Boogaloo. However, the most anticipated upcoming test is that of the water-cooled steel plates. Successful testing could solve the concrete debris issue during Starship launches, enhancing overall efficiency and safety. Another focal point is the rollout of Booster 9, which will likely receive its hot staging extension first. Details regarding the rollout and hot staging process remain speculative, with discussions on whether it will be hot staging before the rollout or vice versa. To facilitate the process effectively, a hot staging adapter is expected to be used between the ship and the booster. These developments are crucial as SpaceX moves forward with its ambitious space exploration plans. As the testing and preparations continue at Starbase, space enthusiasts are eagerly waiting for the next milestones to be achieved. Up next, Musk's SpaceX controls 60% share of global launch business as it eyes India. The company's ambitious goals include bringing its Starlink internet service, which utilizes low-orbit satellites to provide broadband connectivity to India. SpaceX's achievements in space technology have been nothing short of remarkable, with more than 1,000 satellites already in orbit by June this year. According to astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, SpaceX now accounts for more than 60% of all satellites launched worldwide. Since 2019, the company has sent nearly 5,000 satellites into space and has applied for permission to operate a staggering total of 42,000. This impressive figure showcases the scale and ambition of SpaceX's satellite deployment plans. The company's commitment to revolutionizing internet connectivity goes hand-in-hand hand with its goal of expanding Starlink's services to India. After a meeting with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in the US, Elon Musk expressed his enthusiasm for the country's potential in solar energy investment. He sees India as a promising market for the Starlink internet service, stating, I am incredibly excited about the future of India. I think India has more promise than any large country in the world. Musk's vision for Starlink's expansion in India is driven by the belief that improved internet connectivity can be a game-changer, particularly in remote villages with limited access to broadband services. By providing broadband internet through Starlink's low-orbit satellite network, SpaceX aims to bridge the digital divide and empower underserved communities with better connectivity and opportunities. SpaceX's commitment to expanding its satellite capabilities is not limited to Earth. The company's Falcon 9 rocket successfully launched the ABA first runner satellite for Indian space sector startup Azista BST Aerospace. The satellite was part of a dedicated rideshare mission, carrying 72 spacecraft, including CubeSats and Microsats. Azista BST Aerospace, an Indo German satellite manufacturing joint venture, aims to make significant contributions to the space sector. Additionally, SpaceX recently deployed Indonesia's new communications satellite into orbit, a significant milestone in enhancing connectivity in the country. The $550 million spacecraft is designed to provide free internet connections to 150,000 public facilities, including schools, regional government offices, and health facilities, strengthening communication infrastructure and benefiting Indonesian communities. Up next, SpaceX revenue expected to double, soaring to $8 billion. SpaceX, the pioneering aerospace company led by Elon Musk, is set to witness a significant surge in sales, with estimates projecting its revenue to double to approximately $8 billion by 2023. Industry insiders familiar with the matter reveal that these optimistic forecasts have sparked enthusiasm among investors, driving up the value of SpaceX shares which have outperformed other private tech companies despite recent market downturns. In a recent development, CNBC reported that SpaceX's valuation soared to nearly $150 billion following an announcement of a stock sale by existing investors. The company has struck a deal with both new and existing investors 
to sell up to $750 million in stock at a price of $81 per share, marking a 5% increase from the previous secondary sale that had valued the company at around $140 billion. This impressive valuation showcases the strong confidence investors have in SpaceX's potential for growth and success. While the company has not offered any official statements regarding the purchase offer, these developments underscore the remarkable achievements of SpaceX in the space industry. With its successful launches, innovative technologies, and ambitious plans for the future, SpaceX has positioned itself as a front-runner in the global space market, revolutionizing space travel and satellite deployment. The projected revenue growth and soaring valuation highlight the continued success of SpaceX's endeavors, including its renowned Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets, Starlink satellite constellation, and various space missions. Up next, Russia's Luna 25 moon lander reaches launch site for August 11th liftoff. Russia's long-awaited lunar exploration mission, Luna 25, is finally making progress as it arrives at its launch site, the Vostokny Cosmodrome. The Luna 25 spacecraft, built by Russian aerospace company NPO Lavoshkina, is set to embark on its mission this August. The spacecraft marks Russia's re-entry into moon exploration after a significant delay. According to NPO Lavochkina, the construction of Luna 25 has been completed and it is now ready for its groundbreaking task. The spacecraft is designed to achieve a soft landing in the South Pole region of the Moon, a feat that has not been accomplished before. The primary objective of the mission is to conduct contact studies of the lunar soil in search of ice. The spacecraft will utilize the latest advancements in space instrumentation and rely entirely on Russian technology. What sets Luna 25 apart from its Soviet Union predecessors is its landing strategy. Unlike previous lunar missions that targeted the equatorial zone, Luna 25 aims to achieve a soft landing in the circumpolar region, which presents more challenging terrain. Lavochkina emphasizes that this mission will pioneer the development of basic technologies for soft landings in this region and facilitate contact studies of the Moon's South Pole. Luna 25's intended landing site is near the Bogoslavsky crater in the South Pole region of the Moon. Additionally, a reserve area has been designated southwest of the Manzini crater. The spacecraft will focus on studying the upper surface layer of the Moon in this region, as well as investigating the lunar exosphere. Moreover, Luna 25 will contribute to the development of landing and soil sampling technologies. Once on the Moon's surface, Luna 25 is expected to operate for at least one Earth year. This extended active life will allow for comprehensive data collection and analysis. The mission's objectives align with the legacy of the former Soviet Union's lunar exploration activities, which last concluded with the successful delivery of lunar soil by Luna 24 in 1976. It's worth noting that Luna 25 faced challenges in its development due to geopolitical circumstances. Originally, the European Space Agency was set to collaborate on the mission by providing the European Pilot D camera designed specifically for precise lunar landings. However, due to the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, the ESA had to cancel its participation in Luna 25 and other collaborative space projects. With Luna 25's arrival at the launch site, Russia is poised to make significant strides in lunar exploration once again. This mission not only showcases Russia's capabilities in space exploration, but also paves the way for future advancements and discoveries on the Moon's South Pole. Up next, Rocket Lab launches seven satellites, recovers booster after ocean splashdown. On July 17th, Rocket Lab achieved another milestone in its 39th mission, Baby Come Back, by launching seven small satellites into orbit. The Electron rocket carrying the payloads lifted off from Rocket Lab's New Zealand site on July 18, 9.27 p.m., following a brief delay due to unfavorable weather conditions. The mission earned its name for a compelling reason that is approximately 17 minutes after liftoff, Rocket Lab accomplished a soft splashdown of the Electron's first stage in the Pacific Ocean, marking a critical step towards the company's objective of making the 18-meter-tall Electron's first stage reusable, much like SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. Distinguishing the two recovery strategies, Falcon 9 boosters execute powered vertical touchdowns, whereas the electron size constrains the availability of residual fuel for such maneuvers, necessitating the use of parachutes for recovery. Rocket Lab's pursuit of booster recovery is not new, as the company has previously managed to recover boosters on several missions, including one earlier this year. Though the initial plan involved plucking falling electron boosters with a helicopter, this approach seems to have been laid aside in favor of other recovery methods. In the case of Baby Come Back, 
The primary focus was on successfully deploying the seven satellites into orbit. Rocket Lab efficiently achieved this goal, with the satellites being released over a nearly hour-long span, starting approximately 49 minutes after liftoff. Notably, four of the launched payloads are tiny CubeSats that form part of NASA's Starling mission. The objective of this mission is to test technologies for future swarm missions, wherein multiple spacecraft autonomously coordinate their activities to achieve specific goals. Rocket Lab's mission description highlights that Starling will demonstrate various crucial technologies, such as in-space network communications, onboard relative navigation between spacecraft, autonomous operation planning and execution, and distributed spacecraft autonomy. These experiments with small spacecraft pave the way for future scientific missions, marking a significant advancement in satellite technology. Furthermore, the Baby Comeback mission also carried the LEO-3 demonstration satellite for Telesat, a Canadian communications company, along with two CubeSats for Spire Global, a Virginia-based company specializing in Earth observation through radio frequencies. The successful satellite launch and booster recovery demonstrate Rocket Lab's commitment to advancing space exploration and pushing the boundaries of rocket technology. With each mission, the company strengthens its reputation as a reliable player in the satellite launch industry. Up next, Virgin Galactic to launch second commercial spaceflight on August 10th. Virgin Galactic, the private spaceflight company founded by Sir Richard Branson, is gearing up for its second commercial spaceflight known as Galactic Zero Two. The mission is scheduled to launch on August 10th from New Mexico's Spaceport America. Unlike the previous mission, which was for government customers, Galactic Zero Two will be the company's first private astronaut mission. This upcoming mission is set to break new ground in several ways. It will be the first to carry a former Olympian into space, 80-year-old British adventurer John Goodwin. Goodwin, who competed in canoeing during the 1972 Summer Games in Munich, has Parkinson's disease and will become just the second person diagnosed with the condition to reach space. When I was diagnosed with Parkinson's in 2014, I was determined not to let it stand in the way of living life to the fullest, Goodwin said. And now, for me to go to space with Parkinson's is completely magical. I hope this inspires all others facing adversity and shows them that challenges don't have to inhibit or stop them from pursuing their dreams. In addition to Goodwin, Galactic Zero Two will also carry a mother-daughter duo from the Caribbean nation of Antigua and Barbuda. Keisha Shahaf and Anastasia Mayers won their seats through a sweepstakes organized by Virgin Galactic and charity fundraising platform Omaze, with the money raised going to the non-profit Space for Humanity. The fact that I am here, the first to travel to space from Antigua, shows that space really is becoming more accessible," Shahaf said. When I was two years old, just looking up to the skies, I thought, how can I get there? But being from the Caribbean, I didn't see how something like this would be possible. Joining the private astronauts will be three Virgin Galactic employees. The company's chief astronaut instructor, Beth Moses, will be in the cabin of the VSS Unity space plane alongside Goodwin, Shahaf, and Mayers. CJ Sturko and Kelly Latimer will be at the controls as commander and pilot, respectively. The mission will begin with Unity being carried aloft beneath the wing of a carrier plane called White Knight 2, which will release the spacecraft at an altitude of about 50,000 feet. Unity will then ignite its onboard rocket motor and make its way to suborbital space, providing passengers with a few minutes of weightlessness and breathtaking views of Earth. Nicola Pasile will command White Knight 2 for Galactic Zero Two, and Mike Masucci will serve as the pilot. With this upcoming mission, Virgin Galactic aims to demonstrate the accessibility of space for a diverse range of individuals, inspiring others to reach for the stars regardless of any challenges they may face. That was all the Starbase update and space news for today. What are your thoughts Starbase updates? Share your views in the comments section below. And if you want to see more interesting videos, don't forget to subscribe with all notifications enabled so you don't miss out on the latest news on SpaceX.